part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's... This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birdwine. You're listening to The Krypton Report. June is fast approaching, and that is not only Superman Day, but it's also the 10th anniversary of Man of Steel. Check out our website on Facebook for the information to join, as we will be updating it, our live Man of Steel rewatch. We'll be streaming, and we'll be making an online party to rewatch Man of Steel. So please add that to your calendar. And remember... Look up in the sky! Solomon and I just finished the Legion. Solomon, what do you think? Wow. What is wow? Yeah? Just wow? Yeah. I mean, it was too darn dope. And I loved it so much. What did you tell me about Brainiac's story? What was it like? Pinocchio. Ah, because Brainiac, what happened to Brainiac? He turned to a real boy. He did. It was really good. It was really surprising. Definitely went in a different path the last two episodes. Yeah. Welcome to the Krypton Report podcast. I hope you can hear me and everything's coming in great because this has been a heck of a night. First of all, I'm your host, Tyler, the Superman in blue, the man of tomorrow. I'm using a new interface that I had to get because my other interface was crapping out. So I hope it sounds good. It's all dialed in. Sounds good to me over on my end. That's James, the Superman of Red, my best pal, with the beard of might and the man of steel. And then, (laughs) right as we're about to start recording, my daughter decides to mess around and play with um, my cords and unplugs my computer and shuts down everything. And now half of my stuff's not coming back online. So I'm very frustrated and just not in a good mood, but I want to talk with James. So Uh, it usually brightens our day. It does. It does. So we're going to do what we can. But hey, everybody, how are you? Good, good, good. We got a few things to go over. Not a whole lot. Um, poor James didn't get to the comic book store this week, so we're going to have to just postpone uh, Action 1054 oh, for next time. Yeah, no. Life. Life, it um, happens. I'll be able to get to the comic book store this, this week and... um read a couple of issues on ultra finish been, up world's finest and uh the new lost number two is on there now isn't it um yeah i think so yeah is it yeah right. i think so I'll add, I'll add that to our list too um but yeah so i mean that's what's going on with us um let's see let's start here any news um uh, I finally found some Flash figures at Walmart. They had the Barry 2 and the uh, Batmobile. I was going to say, do they say, do they call them anything different? Like um, on the packaging to differentiate? I'm just curious if they I have some sort pay, of. You know what? I didn't even pay attention when my, I got my McFarlane stuff. Uh, Kids were so yeah, fun. usually I flip them over and take a look and see what they say on the back if they have some sort of different yeah. name for the character or something. The kids were so pumped. I didn't even pay attention. They just wanted to open stuff and get to it. So hold on a second. Let me look. <laughs> I'll grab my cards here because I keep all the cards in a nice binder of plastic like I did back in the day. It just says The Flash. Hmm. Okay. And then it says on the back, it says The Flash, Batman costumed. In an al- in an alternate 2013 created by the time-traveling Barry Allen, teenage young Barry has grown up carefree with the support of both his parents, but is yet to experience the events that will transform him into The Flash, full of excitement and wonder at the arrival of his older self, visiting from 2022. Young Barry is eager to discover whether he is able to gain the very same powers and become a superhero in his own. So that's what I find fascinating. 
is, and I've seen this in a couple things in the trailer, is how this all works is because it says young Barry. So this is the regular Barry of Earth One, just having grown up with his parents. It's not an alternate Earth Barry. Like, and then if that's the case, then how does the whole Keaton thing come in? I don't know. Like, it's confusing now. Well, the different Earth made sense, but now it's uh, Barry as if he never got his powers. I don't know. Yeah, I really, I, I'm, I'm. I think we discussed that a little bit. Like, I'm not sure what what to what to think. Um, this go around, like, is it different time multiverse? Um, what characters are we? going to see how are things going to be different i'm just yeah there's a lot of interesting ideas here is is it like you know main berry is zack snyder's berry and other berries justice berry and they gotta fight i don't know (laughs) i don't know i'm just i'm just like i don't i don't i mean honestly i don't know what to expect i'm trying to figure it out and i'll just wait till the movie there's context clues that makes it seem like time travel but then when you throw in the keaton and car thing it's like well do they completely like you know flashpoint it where um car came and not cal that wouldn't i mean that makes sense but then the whole keaton thing that's a different universe but i I don't know Um, yeah um i think you know off off mic we've chatted about it and we've thrown a lot of different um theories and things around so i'm i'm ex i'm very interested and excited to see you know what we may have uh guessed right you know yeah we'll, we'll, we'll we will know come june which is basically a month of, like june itself is a month away we are recording april 30th late at night so by the time this drops it'll be may 1st Getting closer and closer all the time. All right. So let's see. The only thing I have really for news, I'm trying to calm down and come back to being happy, is we got the first image of Justice League War World. And it is the Trinity. And we were right. It is part of the continuity, the Tomorrow Verse, with Jensen Ackles back as Batman, Stana, uh, Darren Chris as Superman. And then this is the fun one. Stana. Um, Caddy, I can never pronounce her name right. It's Wonder Woman, which is great because that's the Wonder Woman that we had met. She did the voice for Wonder Woman in uh, the Justice Society of World War II, but that was a different Earth Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to meet our main Earth Wonder Woman, and it's still voiced by her, which is awesome. So, that's yeah, cool. the, the costume was definitely different, more up to date. Yeah, it it is. So that's exciting, you know, that that is continuity, that is the next film coming. Um do we we do we do we have a date on it yet? I haven't seen a date on it yet. And I I'm wondering when because I mean this year we were front loaded heavily uh with Legion of Superheroes and the Doom that came to Gotham and Ruby that comes out. It just came out very I, shortly. It already came out. It came out this past week. Oh, did it? Oh, okay. Yeah, I have no I interest that. in it. Yeah, I have no interest in it, so I haven't talked about it because I don't care. I'm not buying it. <laughs> well, then you will be able to watch it when I buy it because I probably will be. Or I'll, um, or I'll you know, maybe when I like I'm anime and so do my kids. So, well, that's why James can review it. That's fine with me. <laughs> I can take little bits of stride, but not on this one. I was like, I'll pass. Um, but yeah, it just came out. So, all right. And that's all we have for news. And then for shows, we got a, we got a slam banger for us. Because not only do we have Superman and Lois, but we are finishing the Legion. And I threw a poll up on what our next um 
serious to be. I had my I had in my notes for something, but then I was like, you know what? We're gonna throw up a poll, and I threw up a poll, and I'm curious when the poll finishes what we will officially be doing. But I have it's between Superboy season three and uh, the Ruby Spears cartoons. And if we do the Ruby Spears, it'll be easy and quick. So that could be cool. I, I would. I was kind one. of hoping for that. I was kind of hoping for another, or to extend that gap between seasons of Superboy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what I'm hearing is James like triple ups his vote for uh, the Ruby Spears. So, yeah, you know, it might, it might, we might do that. That'll be fun. Um, our friend Case Aiken that you haven't got a chance to chat with, you'll like. Mm-hmm. Um, he said if we do Ruby Spears, he definitely wants to join us. So. Oh, um, cool. It might be leaning that way, and we'll get back to on that because it is fun to have these kind of backup shows to kind of follow. And you know, as our friend Anthony from Digging for Kryptonite says, closing certain parts of our Superman fandom. So we've closed the Legion gap, and we're going to talk about it. So here we go: Season Two, Episode Twelve, Dark Victory, Part One. The Legion faces Imperiax in a final battle. Why a traitor lurks in their midst. That is a, uh, it got a 7.4 on IMDb. That is a, uh, (laughs) a light. What? So I actually, I did get to watch these episodes with Solomon, which was fun. So James, what what did you think here? Um, well, for part one, uh, I thought it was interesting. I didn't, I didn't really see, um, Brainy being the big bad. Right. So basically... Um, Brainiac 5 gets taken over by um, Brainiac 1.0 and he basically betrays the Legion and kills Imperiax and kills Superman original OG Superman and I'm sitting there like oh my god like how is this happening what I'm like freaking out I'm like what is going on yeah Imperiax has been this big threat the whole season i don't know i guess maybe we should have known seeing as he kind of popped in and out the way he did but also that's kind of like the thing like they could never stop him he always gets away i i i guess i, I mean, guess geez. i mean he, he always beat him down and then got away usually or they foiled a plot and it was just like one battle um, um but <laughs> She did not like what happened. She did not like uh, that Sunboy got beat up and taken. <laughs> I was gonna she say Sunboy was Sunboy had a lot of showings in in these episodes, didn't he? Yes, he did. I just you know I the fact that Brainiac Five takes over, blasts OG Superman with Kryptonite and kills him. I'm like, uh, that's time paradoxing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, um. Uh, rock, uh, cosmic boy, rocking his uh, '70s porn star hairdo. See those sideburns, man? Yes. <laughs> and you just see how like Brainiac just like took over and threw. Kel was mad because he was like, Imperiax was mine. Uh, not right. Brainiac betraying and killing us all. No, he's just like Imperiax is mine. Yeah. I was, I was going to say, are we just kind of talking about these as a whole? <laughs> yeah. I went back to that. Right. And, uh, I did too. So season Dark Victory Part 2. Jimmy was after, pumped watching Part 2. I know. I was like, um, Solomon, as soon as Part 1 ended, Solomon's on his edge. Like, we have to do it, Dad. I was like, we're going to. Like, this is the end, you know? And Part 2's description is, after eliminating Imperiax, Brainiac 5 takes over his army and plans to take over the universe. But Superman... Thought to be dead, the other legionnaires must uh, stop him before it's too late. And this is Brainiac goes back to Kalu, and they're gonna plug him into the hive mind. And I looked at Solomon like, dude, he is not going into the hive mind. He is gonna take over the hive mind. And you know what happened? Oh yeah, I knew he was like, nope. I he wanted to be there. I'm like, he is going to take over the hive mind. I was like, it was just too easy for the rest of them to capture him like that. So, I was um, just like this. It was intense. I mean, because you really have 
the stakes higher, be, you know, and of course they give like a silent funeral to Superman and jettison him into the sun. Cause of course that's what you do with Solomon is, or Solomon, Jesus, <laughs> Superman. Cause Solomon's watching it. Like what's going on? Uh, I was like, uh, I was like, either I was like, either he's not dead, or he's, or that's just gonna like recover him, and he's gonna come back more powerful. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad that Brainiac. So Brainiac One was the true villain taking over and utilizing Brainiac Five. Um. Mm-hmm. So Brainiac One was the villain, and. Brainiac 5 was the ultimate hero. Yeah, because, you know, he... So we find out that Superman's not dead. He's, like, in a status coma, so Kel has to fly to the sun to get Superman before he burns up in the sun, I guess. I don't know. And it was interesting because I'm like, well, is this going to make him more powerful? But Kel saves him, and they do this thing where they're doing like a blood transfusion, basically, between Superman and Superman X. And his Superman X is a you know his blood is adapted to not be affected by kryptonite. So I'm thinking, how how does this transfusion work? Because of course it brings Superman out of his coma, but would that permanently change him so that from now on he won't be affected by kryptonite? Right. So when, he, when he goes back, he's going to be like, oh, look, Kryptonite doesn't hurt me. I mean, maybe for a list, at least just a little while, right? I guess. I don't, I don't know. Maybe but, his body works it out of his system. Excuse me. Because it's not his blood? Question mark? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, sure. Yeah. <laughs> um. We're like, we'll figure it out. I guess. Right. Uh, so a couple of cool things I, I did like. Um, Brainiac using all of the Kaluans to create one giant Brainiac. And they're like, oh, we're going to die. <laughs> oh, Lightning Lad's like, yeah, we're going to lose. Basically. Yeah. He, he... <laughs> he said, yeah, we're definitely going to lose. Um, That was pretty cool. Uh, Superman and Superman X going into being projected into Brainy's mind, um, being deleted by Brainiac, and then Saturn Girl merging them into one, a blue and a red Superman yeah. so, raised so- up out of their bodies. <laughs> I got like super excited, like ridiculously excited. And I was like, oh, wow. I'm like, so Kel is red. Oh, there's James. Yeah. And OG Superman is blue. I'm like, oh, this is cool. This is another example of like the red and blue energy. And we didn't even know about it. Yeah, didn't even know it was coming. But as soon as they did that, I was like, oh, that's really cool. Like, I was like, oh, what are. He said, like, um, you guys are too weak and you can't beat him se- uh, separately or something and she's like and he and he's like do it and i was like well they're in the mind okay sure and then she did that that thing and she pulled the blue and the red out and then she did like a dragon ball z fusion where they became one and you know through their unity it awakened Brainiac 5 and he officially destroyed Brainiac 1 and in the process as Solomon put it he went through his Pinocchio journey well now he's a real boy yeah yeah well, it was interesting how that happened um yeah i did like that he's like how could i give up on myself when you never when you never would so i i love that he, he even still he used his idolization of superman and his eternal hope and optimism um to to you he used it to to further himself or 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 save himself there we go couldn't find the right words <laughs> yeah it was it was a really good and you know what i for like we've talked about is where you know, this season of the Legion has been very much trying to do kind of the overarching, almost Bruce Timian uh, <laughs> nice. storyline. 
where it was like an overarching, but it yet at the same time we felt like we just kept getting lost where we'd go on some weird tangent and be like, okay, so what's happening with the main story? This uh it it turned out shocking, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Definitely threw me for a loop. But I like I liked it. I'm gonna kinda miss the Legion because now me and Solomon can't cheer on Sunboy. It'll was the OG, but you know. Yeah, the way Jimmy was really excited about it, I was like, "Oh, sweet!" I say we're gonna have to. Um, uh, I said I got the Blu-ray here, so you're gonna have to watch it from the beginning. And he was like, "Okay, dude, let's do it. <laughs> and start it over." Right. <laughs> and I, I, I would not fault him. I mean, I'll probably end up watching some of them again with Solomon because he missed a few, but I love it when he's in, when he's into it. But, all right, so now we're going to jump over to Superman Lois. This will probably be a shorter episode than our usual podcast because we got started later because of all the technical issues, and I'm still frustrated that I want to punch my computer, but I love my computer. So I'm going to have to talk dirty to it later and tell it how much I love it. Um, but Superman and Lois Season 3, um, <laughs> Episode 6 of Sound Mind. Clark finds himself in uncharted territory. Lois responds with a new friend. Superman pays Bruno Mannheim a surprise visit. Lana puts Sarah in charge while she's away at a meeting with Chrissy. All right. First thing with this episode, I must say, I'm driving, okay? And I can't remember if it was just me or if it was in our group chat. Uh, I get a message from Brian like, Sophie's so annoying. And I'm like, are you watching Halloween Town? He's like, no. Superman Lois. I'm like, who? He's like, Sophie. Who? He's like, my point exactly. <laughs> okay, so speaking of our group chat, like, after watching this episode, because I made a good joke about it. You were doing the joke, like, what? Who? Like, that was funny. I mean, unless you thought it was something else at first. But no, I, still. I, I knew what he meant, and, like, it's funny because, like, we love the movie, the Halloween Town movie. Like, it's just, you know. Hold on, family. pause a second. The Halloween Towns are just family-friendly, cheesy Halloween movies. You know what I'm saying? And we love the first one, but I always found the, the sister, Sophie, annoying. So when the first thing that came to mind when he said Sophie was that, and I was just messing with him. But, you know, it's just one of those, like, when the writer's like, we're going to put in this character, and they create one, but then they're like, oh, we don't know what to do with her, and she disappears. And then they yeah. decide, we'll have her come back as a plot point, and this. And you're just like, oh, this is... It's annoying just because, you know, she's definitely getting older. You can tell the actress is growing up. But, like, she's been absent for how long? Or just kind of in the background. But it, the whole point that she's in this is not for her. It's not for the, the, the family. It's to give Jonathan something. You know, because we, we get later in the episode where she runs off because she's hungry and Sarah tells her to get some food. And, you know, Sarah's a dumb teenager. She doesn't even be watching her sister, okay? Um, you know, Kyle's out for a day date with Chrissy. And, you know, um, it just it just happens that Jonathan, you know, he goes with Sarah because he was studying with Sarah. And he talks her, you know, down or into just understanding. And that's his arc. And it it's his arc where he was you know at the firehouse and they gave him an old uniform with rusty on the name and it's too big and jonathan or jordan has the great line about you look like a, a full adult that has shrunk back to being 17 he said you look like a guy who wished to be a child again and, and, and so like i i chuckled like hardcore about that and Um, I, so so one i'm enjoying i i like the the guy who is playing jonathan um yeah. i think he's doing well um he did a good job in that emotional beat um with sophie uh the it's a little it's a little jarring hearing him talk about things that the other actor did but that's just one of those things that you've kind of got to separate because it is a show. 
Yeah. Um, it's the same person, same character. Um, this so, is yeah, what they did on Black Lightning. Did you watch the final season of Black Lightning at all? Uh, no, but I believe you told me about it that when she came back from like an energy matter state, that yeah, they re- they used that as an excuse to be like, oh, you look different, and you know. Yep, it's, it's like and and th- yeah, and the th- and the only thing the only thing that bothers me about that is it's purely for the audience. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you recast somebody and they're playing the exact same character, it's the audience's job to associate that is the same character. Like it doesn't matter that they look different; it is the same character. So to have to come up with an excuse. For the audience. You know what I'm saying? It's not for the people in the show. Especially in this respect. Yeah. So in this respect, it was done well. You yeah, know? It, it was. I, I, liked the, I liked the new guy. In, I, I really liked Jordan. <laughs> yeah. And, and in some ways, I, I wish it was still him. But in some ways, I kind of wish Michael Bishop here had started from the beginning. To kind of go through the roller coaster ride of the character. But, you know, with him working at the fire station... And because of the events with helping Sophie, you know, Kyle backs off on him a little bit of being as, as uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. hard as he is. I don't pay you sh- nothing just to stand around. <laughs> He's like, your generation, man. They just want to hurry and get to the top. Like, no way. <laughs> no, it was shirt. really good. I did <laughs> like, though, Lil Kent. And he yeah. said, what are you, Kansas or Smallville's worst rapper? <laughs> <laughs> Jordan had the good lines on him this episode, man. Yeah, he did. Um, right. no the the thing I was saying though the the even though she was a plot point to kind of drive a little bit of Jordan um Jonathan's storyline forward, um, they actually utilized her very well in this episode. Um, I did. I did make a joke about what Brian had said because we hadn't seen the episode yet um, about, well, you would be acting out too if your parents and family and friends acted like you didn't exist because you were never around. Mm -hmm. Um, So I did make a a nice, uh, it was a funny joke because it is true. The character only pops in and out. Um, But... What she did this episode and the way she was used, I was kind of like that was a that was kind of an asshole thing to say <laughs> about about her character in this episode. I was like because that was that was a poor girl, you know. Everybody's got things going on in their life, and uh, unfortunately, she kind of fell through the cracks. And I mean, I know it was written in as kind of a plot thing. But she is still part of the show, and she has been from the beginning. So the idea that she is suffering with like everybody being so busy that she's kind of being left out and forgotten yeah. about it was it was rough, you know. I mean, that's a terrible thing to to have to deal to to have to deal with, especially as a you know like twelve year old. It, the the saddest part is, you know, they bring her in for this big dramatic part, and then she's nothing. And speaking of people and being brought in, no John Henry Irons and no Nat this week. Not even a mention. Now, we know we talked about two episodes ago, and I think it was two episodes ago when John was there, that he was going off to protect um, this world's John Henry Irons' his family. Mm-hmm. You know, but... There is no Nat or John in this episode and no mention of them either. So I always hate when there's like no dialogue, but we get Sophie back. <laughs> it's like, you got to pick guys. You want Soph? You want Nat? Like, come on. Uh, well, we only have so much time on screen. As long as everybody gets their, their, their proper, you know what I mean? I just, I, I would think it would be, it, it would, it would feel like if Sophie never was brought up again. Yeah. If Sophie was never brought up again, it would be like Donna's younger sister. Exactly. From that 70s show. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) And that would be wrong. It would be. 
it's just one of those things where they create a character and then they're like, oh, what do we do with this character? All right, so, so we're, we're in this vein. Let's talk real quick. Kyle and Chrissy still shacking up. Uh, Chrissy's, you know, talking with Lana and Chrissy basically tells Kyle like she wants, she hates holding this back from Lana. And then um, she don't got to hold it back much longer now, does she? Yeah. <laughs> or anymore. <laughs> we, we find out, uh, Lana finds out in a very weird, awkward way. Kyle's in the store on one side of the aisle. And then Lana, like, is, he's looking and then looks on the other side and there's Chrissy kind of like hiding her head. And she's like, oh, this is why my daughter's missing. Yeah. Well, I mean, most people, when they see their ex with somebody, it's it's a little upsetting in some way, some form or fashion. Um, so, but it just happened at the worst possible time where their daughter is missing. So otherwise, I don't think her reaction would have been as harsh. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it was literally a circumstantial time when that happened. Um, Because something later on happens in the episode um, when Jordan and John walk off screen for their final time where he's like, well, Sarah likes. And he's like, you hung out with Sarah. Now, if... Jonathan were to start dating Sarah, that'd be a huge breach of the bro code. That'd be not only a breach of the bro code, that'd just be a breach of crap and bad writing. That's just drama for drama's sake. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> that's what Jania even said. She's like, come on. I'm like, no. I was like, because I am a big champion for male female friendships. Yeah. Like, healthy, honoring, like, just showing that men and women can be friends and have great relationships. That's why I've always. In this series, I like the way they've done the Lana and Clark relationship. Um, yeah, so, I, there was a romance, a romantic interest there, but they are still just great friends. And and with Sarah, like in Jonathan, I think they could be good friends. You know, he could kind of lean on her for just a friendship with him, you know, now getting over another girlfriend. Poor guy. And then, you know, she's getting over Jordan and wherever that is. Um but yeah, if something would happen between them two, I would be I would be very upset with the writing and feeling like you're just creating drama where there doesn't need to be anything. And yeah. That's just problems. Right. I definitely I definitely feel that way too. Um that should be a no go, you know? I mean, but when you're talking about a divorced man and a yeah. relationship with somebody like it was all it was all circumstantial the time when she found out, so why she's so upset. Yeah. And I told Janice like Lana doesn't have to worry. She'll be uh she'll be getting somebody here soon when he gets back in town. He goes mm. up back in the John wagon. Uh, <laughs> so th- and then the last I think beat for that side is um Kyle basically comes to Chrissy and she thinks he's breaking up or whatever, and he basically says no, he wants to you know, solidify their relationship as a couple and be an actual couple and, you know, not hide everything. So that was cool. Like, you know, as much as I hate how they kind of did Kyle um, with the whole him cheating on Lana and that whole thing, I I do still think they they found a way to make him a good person, a good character, you know? Yeah, uh, I I think they dropped us in at the worst time in their lives. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he seems like the bad guy, but it's really not just him, you know? And he really is a good guy and a good father. Um, I, I do, I do like the pairing. I, I like that. He, I do like the pairing of him with Chrissy and, uh, you know, the, the potential future pairing of John Henry and Lana. So it, it'll come together. Um, let's see here. So that's that's that group of characters. Jordan has his own little arc where he's training with Clark and he thinks he's ready. And Clark takes him to the cave and turns up the atomic skull and Bizarro and then uses battle drones to shoot him with lasers. And my favorite line in setup in this episode is Jordan comes back and he's yelling and it's a very strong emotional moment between uh, Lois 
and Clark, but then it's ended with shoot what you shot our son with lasers <laughs> and like it was just uh, <laughs> it, it was like it was a really good way of like kind of ending on a joke but without being too like where you just threw away all the drama you just had in the last moment right well kind of the the also the thing like during their training session when when jordan finally got upset and everything he says every time i pass one of your tests or what did he say specifically? Uh, anytime I pass one of your lessons, there's another one to learn. And it's like, well, yeah, like you're, you're talking about like saving people like Superman. That's like a global scale and making some of the hardest choices you could ever make. Yeah. And you know, Jordan says, um, <clears throat> he says like lessons never stop with that. <laughs> you know, um, I have Superman to teach me. I have my dad Superman to teach me. You know? Yeah. Like, like there's no greater says, teacher you could ask for. Because Clark says, like, I didn't have anyone. Like, I had to figure this out on my own. He talks about threat assessment, risk assessment. He's like, well, I have you to teach me, but I still have to, you know, be able to do things and learn. So that was really good. Yeah. Which was good, too, because um, Jordan went to save the day a mudslide or a flood. And I think it was Utah. Um, yeah. And he went and saved the day. Uh, he comes back and he's covered in mud, which makes for a great family moment of him. Like, you need to take a shower and stop getting mud <laughs> on the floor. It was really yes, good. But, yes. <laughs> but, yes. I love that. Like, dude, because that's that is so Solomon, dude. Just like oblivious. Like, dude, take your shoes off. Like, <laughs> right. Um. And, uh, but, but Clark is very mad at him for doing what he did for going out and saving. But, um, but Lois says she, she said it was okay. Yeah, and he, and he do. pulls back. Like, I like that she is, she is trusting him and, and giving him that support, uh, especially with what happens when, uh, Automatopoeia, because we're still calling her that um, lures yeah, Superman one. with Lois's voice sounding like she's in trouble. And between them and some kryptonite laser um, guns, they are really putting it to Superman, like, like oh, potentially yeah. about to kill him um, and, when know, she, say, she tells him to go save his dad. Yeah. Go save your father. I love it because he's like, you got to call grandpa. And then he says, dad's not, uh, he'll, they'll never get there in time. And, you know, she says, dad says, I'm not ready. And she's like, you're ready. Go save your father. And, uh, Jamie was like, that's a, uh, that's a really hard. And like, she was like, maybe that's even a bad thing to add, to, to put on your child. But I was like, well, he's, oh, well. he's the only one. Like, that's a Superman level thing you have to do. Like he he's the only one who has the strength and the speed to be able to get there in time to save him. Exactly. And it was a great scene. And what, what was interesting was a, before that scene, just a little bit before that scene, Jania, she goes, she looks at me and she goes, have we ever seen what kryptonite does to Jordan? And I was like, I don't think so. Yeah. And not then, specifically that I can recall. Exactly. And then in that scene, he gets shot by the kryptonite cannon, knocks him out, but he pops back up. And when they get back home, he says kryptonite affects him differently. He gets that from you. Well, uh, yeah, because the that is one thing that's been really good about this show is they haven't used kryptonite as a crutch to weaken Superman to have him um, be overwhelmed. I mean, no and yes. I mean, <laughs> they've used kryptonite weapons. They've, you know, what I'm saying like yeah. because the DoD had a bunch stolen, and then we have these uh, that we use in this it's, episode. It's been around and it's been a threat, but it's not been it's not been the only threat, and it has been something that he has been able to overcome. But in like in this case, like he was almost going to be dead, and Jordan took out all of those people. And so he was only contending with automatopoeia and the sonic waves 
when it came down to it in the end after Jordan got shot. And I love like, you know, Jordan's getting hurt and dad just snaps, you know? And you know what I thought? I, I thought that maybe there was some sort of, um, lead protection from the DOD suit, Mm. uh, for Jordan in it. But just just from the look of it, after it took some of the damage, but I was like, I don't know, maybe. And then he popped up, and I, and then he said, you know, what he said, he reacts differently or whatever. So it was it was really good with with that. And so that all right. So we're kind of whittling it back. <laughs> um, because you know the main story of this is Lois in her next cancer treatment, and. I can't remember her friend's name. Um, that they're talking, and you know, Pia she, is that what it is? Pia. I think yeah, so. You're right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. My bad, I suck. Um, but you know, Pia is asking about her story on Bruno Mannheim and what's going on with it, and um, she's like, "Well, let me show you," and she takes her out basically into Hobbs Bay, and she's talking about the good that Mannheim's done, and what's what's happened and we were at this restaurant she's like i've never heard of this place well it's like it just kind of is new because it used to be this or it used to be that and lois is getting a different perspective on the hobbs bay hospital and the type of people that work there and you know they're talking about how lois is about to lose her taste because her she's in her third or about to start her fourth treatment yeah and she said that's when her taste buds went to hell so you know they're going out to you know eat and everything and her and Lois are are bonding and that's good and and the big thing is like this episode starts with Clark in basically therapy and um he's listening to people talk about their testimonies about what they've been through and we find out the lady who hosts it her husband went through it and it got to the point where he was staying alive and suffering just because of her. And she eventually had to say she had to tell him it was okay to let go. And then the next thing Clark's there and he was like done already. He's like, yeah, wasn't for me. And so Clark actually had a really good arc in this episode, with just learning to let go and that he doesn't have control and that him and Lois are going to butt heads because he's going to, you know, Lois is angry because she's trying to prepare for death just in case. And Clark's like, nope, you're going to beat this. Nope, nope, nope. And he has to come around to, he can be hopeful and optimistic with the determination that she is going to beat it, but they still have to repair. And he needs to be with her, with what she's feeling, and not just basically try to force his feelings on her. So it was, it was good stuff. And that was a, it was a good bookend for the episode, starting there and ending there. Yes, it starts in him in therapy, and it ends with him going back to therapy. Yeah, it starts the episode with him as Clark, ends the episode with him as Clark. Uh, I took a big drink of water. But I'll leave this up to my buddy James here. James, my man. Yeah. What is the big reveal in this episode? So the big reveal, I called it. Um, I'm pretty sure I called it at the dinner scene. That I bet she is Automatopoeia. And it is the cancer patient that Clark and Lois have been talking to. Pia, who Lois went out to dinner with. She is Automatopoeia. She has, she, I am thinking she is related to Mannheim in some way or married to Mannheim in some way. That's what I thought. Because my thing is, I told Jania, I was like, she's never really said her husband's name. Or anything. So the whole time I started peeing together, like, what her husband's oh, Bruno yeah. Mannheim. Oh, okay. Then, yeah. Yeah. Married. And then the end happens. And I'm like, oh, sh- she's Onomatopoeia and Bruno's wife. At least that's how mm-hmm. I think. That's how I'm interpreting it. So. Um, Just for some it, reason, I felt this episode that I was like, this isn't, this isn't who we have thrown an idea out there. We haven't said it was her, but maybe. I was, was like, it's small, not. Like, I was like, yeah, I was like, it's not. And then this episode, it just kind of was like, I just, that's her. 
and it was. <laughs> you know, and it's interesting because does she have her powers because Mannheim gave them to her somehow? Because we get the scene with the earlier, we got the scene with the what's a deadlock or deadline or something. The guy that Clark fought Dead. last time. Yeah, I think it was Deadline. And he goes to the DOD and they, um, Sam basically tells him to take him because he's screaming, take me to Bruno Mannheim. And Clark sees the cancer, the lymphoma spreading through his body. And he pops into Bruno's office and he's screaming at Bruno. And Bruno's like, I don't know, take him to a hospital. And then Clark eventually flies out to a hospital with him and he dies. So what we look at in this episode is we have this kind of parallel between Bruno Mannheim being someone who's doing everything he can to save people and, you know, stop death and cure people. Um, and Clark, who's trying to let go and knows that he can't, you know, stop death and save everybody. And where they're both two men trying to deal with the situation of their wives by Bruno's going about it in a, a misguided positive way Clark's doing what he can to support his wife so it was a good episode I mean this whole season I don't think there's there's not been one bad episode or one misstep so far oh no not at all I haven't seen anything I've I've fully enjoyed every single episode um and I'm, I'm really gonna be if the show stays this way for another season and it ends after season four, I'm just going to be like fantastic show from beginning to end. I'm telling you, my theory is it'll go five seasons. My theory is it'll end right before Superman legacy comes out. That's, that's my working theory. It'll be just something to keep the character. Cause I just, I had an interesting conversation recently with Phil and Lilith. Uh, celebrating Superman's 85th anniversary and just talking about whatever. And the one thing we said that we brought up is like, there's been such a lack in Superman merchandise and the character being present in anything. And the fact is we have this great, amazing representation of this character in the show, but there is no merch for this at all. There's no shirts. There's not even generic Superman t-shirts I can walk in and find at Walmart. For the kids, there's no, like, Tyler McFarlane toy yet. There's no poster. You know, think about some of the other Arrowverse shows when they came out, how you could find um, some merch and stuff for them. Like, you know, I had a Flash t-shirt from Grant Gustin's from Hot Topic, you know, and everything. But there is nothing for this show, and it is, like, the best representation of this character. And it's heartbreaking. You know, I, I could probably find a Superman and Lois type sh shirt if I like searched hard, but it should be shouldn't I shouldn't have to like there should be something. Oh yeah, it's just it's it's a well written show. It's a well produced show. It's a well acted show. Um, it's yeah. I, I mean, every aspect of the show is is top notch for you know the the quality being superman this this larger than life character this literal godlike being the way it's pulled off but the groundedness they have to it the characters they utilize um the actors who portray them so fantastic yes it is like and, and it's and it's not and it's not just one it's not it's it's not just one thing of superman like it's not it's 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 pulls from so many areas of superman from all different mediums yep it's, it's the greatest remix uh greatest hit superman there is and i love it and i'll be honest with a f I'm with with great original stories yes that's why like you know everyone's talking about the what superman legacy is going to be and all this and i'm like I'm excited just to see it on the big screen. But to me, this is, this is Superman. This is where it's at. And this is one of my favorite interpretations of the character. And oh I'm yeah. Really happy yeah. With this. Like, I mean, 
I mean, it's it's got to go for me like like Henry Cavill Superman, Tyler's Superman. Um, you know, and then I, then so many different in between, like down below. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, just, I don't know if I can really rank them at all. I mean, we've talked about this before. Like, who's your favorite? And I think. You know, right now, Tyler's my favorite because this version really is speaking to me and touching me in my life. Like, um, just like how Tom Willing was the perfect Superman for what I needed in my life at the time that Smallville debuted. So I don't know if I can ever say who my favorite is or what I, you know, I really liked Brandon when he showed up. I, it represented something for me when Superman Returns came out and. Man of Steel represented something big, and we'll get into more of that this year because it's ten year. But I don't. Well, I mean, you know, I don't have. I I have a favorite, but I don't have one that's like that. I don't uh that I do not like. Oh, I like I like them all. <laughs> yeah. Like, I just... <laughs> all right. Last question for you, James. And we'll we'll be out here. Did you are you caught up on Titans? Uh, I haven't even been able to start Titans, man. The the get second part my, here. Get off my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I cool. want no. It, I'm gonna finish it. Um, I just haven't had a chance here. But yeah, it's it's coming up. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be jumping on it here shortly. That's fine. I just wanted to ask. Like it's it's been it's been interesting. But all right, that's us for now. We're kind of catching up. Well, seeing as it's than... like the final stuff here, I mean. It's almost like when that season, when that series finale drops, it's like boom, binge it right through to the end. That'd be James, <laughs> like the little engine that could. Yeah. Well, that's me and James signing off after this long night of computer battles. Remember, Superman loves you. He's everybody's friend. And remember, look up in the sky. We just want to say, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network. $1 a month, you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show, like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths. So check it out, patreon.com slash Krypton. Before we start this episode of Krypton Report, I want to take a moment and just give a shout out here. To our Patreon. I know what you're thinking. Gosh, everyone's asking for money. And I get it. But our Patreon is only a dollar. One dollar a month that helps us keep the podcast going. And what we do is we try to find interesting shows and topics and whatever we want to talk about. We've done, as of this little thing, our last recordings were on the Scream series. Brian and Tyler, that's me, do our own show where we record in the car. And it's kind of funny. And we talk about pop culture or whatever is going on. We also have the Supernatural podcast we've been reworking. It's taken some time just because of life. But we do movie commentaries as well. It's something that James and I have done, what we used to do on the main show that we've started doing here. So for $1 a month on our Patreon, you can get those shows. There's at least four a month. Also, there's my movie pitch show that I do. But also what we want is if you're a Patreon, you can come on. You can come on the main show if you want. Or if there's something you want to come on and talk about, we can do it as a Patreon special. So all I want is for $1 a month, think about chipping in, joining our Patreon, and you have a voice to be a part of things. Follow the link in the link tree or in the show notes below, patreon.com slash Krypton Report. We're going to press pause and hear a few words from our other podcasts on Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, The Geek of Steel, and Truth 
justice, and hope. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. you find find all of our information. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report.